Welcome back to the Mastering Video Marketing Podcast. I'm Tony Rialli. And I am Ben Carlson. And right over there is Quinn Capel, our ex editor extraordinaire. Yeah. Uh, and Quinn is thankfully operating uh, the B cam for today. We have a B camera. Two cam shoot. Two cams, because we've got two cams in front of us. Um, for those of you just listening, you might want to hop over to YouTube and watch it's the video it. version of it's this worth podcast. It's worth it. Because uh, today we're going to be talking about the new Komodo X that uh, I just got in. And sitting next to us over here is my Red Epic W as well, which I've had for almost seven years now. Wow. It's hard to believe yeah. it's been that long because that still yeah. feels like a new camera. Brand to me. new, yeah. Um, so we're going to just talk about these cameras. I, I just have the Komodo, just got it in, haven't played around with it a ton. Um, but I've been slowly starting to optimize the camera package. You know, sometimes it's easier to get a camera in to then mm -hmm. start to figure what I like, mm -hmm. what I not like. So I feel like that's always been an evolutionary process. You know, there's bits and pieces on my Epic W that I added and then later subtracted because I just didn't use them a ton. Right. Um, but here, uh, I'm just, we're just going to talk about it. We're going to talk about shooting on red. It, yeah. um, I have a lot of different camera packages. Right. Um, right. We're currently shooting on the uh, Blackmagic Ursa as our main cam. Uh, Quinn is operating with the FX30 as our B cam to this. Um, we're just, you know, this is our podcast, so it's not like we're trying to go for perfect matching yeah. cameras every single time. But uh, that is, still, you know, like I have a whole Sony lineup of cameras. So right. it started with, um, I did shoot on the FS100 a little bit, but I bought an FS700 as soon as it came out because that, that just completely changed our production studio. Yeah. We were able to do uh, better because it, I had migrated from the 5D Mark II, which was great. Yeah. Uh, but the FS700 was a legitimate camera, had XLR inputs, had ND filters, it had slow motion. You know, being able to shoot 240 frames per second, there were so many projects yeah. that we used that on. And then uh, I migrated to, well, the, the big thing that eventually they added was the 4K recording. So it, it was almost like getting a second camera at yeah, that point. Yeah, it really was. Uh, and I used that camera for a long time. And then I, I got cameras that kind of went alongside it. I had an A7S, I had an FS5, all Sony cameras. But finally, Red, actually Red had announced the Scarlet, which I did put a down payment on. And they were having a hard time beating demand and oh, like keeping sure. up with the production. So I had that almost a year of pre-order. Mm. Uh, um, and then they announced the Epic W and I'm like, well, that's cool, but a little pricier than I wanted to spend. Sure. But they offered, pre, uh, sometimes they do like previous owner red discounts yeah. and they offer that to people that had put their Scarlet. Uh, so I'm like, well, now that. we're talking. Yeah, um, so, Cause like, stick. yeah, being able to shoot on the 8K, the new helium sensor. Um, I was like, you know what? That future proofs it. So I got the Komodo X more as a B cam to my FXW, although it is like a really solid A cam. There, there's so many features in this yeah. that could easily be a, a good A cam replacement. Yeah. Um, but for me and my, my Sony's, even though like my Epic W, I love this camera, uh, when the, the Sony FX six came out then I was like, okay, now we're talking because yeah. full frame, uh, with autofocus, and reliable ND autofocus. Filters. Uh, yeah. And, and I mean the FS five, it was the first camera of the Sony's that had the variable ND where it had the, where you could literally dial it in by the, the single shop, sure. which yeah. was so cool. Yeah. And I used that a lot when I was needing to like do scenes where I would go like indoor to outdoor because mm -hmm. you can set it to auto aperture, but then your F stop, your, your depth of field yeah. shifts. Yep. Uh, so having it be auto ND, like the, fr the fact that I can say the phrase auto ND is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that was really, really handy. But so the FX six, the big thing, and even the FX 30 that we have, the thing that I love about them is the reliable autofocus. Yes. I've had autofocus in the past where I was like, I might use it, might not use it. Sure. But the fact that I can literally not think about focus when I'm shooting on those cameras yeah. is pretty amazing. The Epic W does not have autofocus, but the Komodo X does have autofocus. Yes. And I would say it is on par or better than my older Sony cameras, like the FS700, the yeah. FS5. Yeah. Um, there are modes that you could do if you're hooked up to a smart device like we are right here. Can we, can we just talk about this? I know we're jumping ahead, but... You just have your phone casually on there yes. on the handle. So I'll get I'll get okay. to the whole explanation, All right. but I'll say it. you can. It has autofocus, but if you have it in uh, the uh, if you have it set up with the smartphone, it can actually um, use it, your your smart device will enable face detect option. That's, you have to have it come into. On. 
So, well I mean, done, it's interesting Red. that, yeah, they, they add that as a smart device hookup. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, yes, it's built into some of the other cameras. So yeah. maybe Red should have had it in the camera. Sure. I don't know. But it is it is a better autofocus system. It's not perfect, not yeah. amazing. But I'd rather have it. Exactly. Because yeah. okay. when we were shooting with the Red on uh, this past week, the there were, you almost had to stylistically hit the, either you were going to hit the focus or you had to do it stylistically where you come in and out to, you know, and the, there is a, there is room for that. But if you're really trying to nail the focus and you don't have an AC, you don't have someone second pulling focus, it's, it's going to be, it's, it's tricky. It is, right. it's just another thing to think about. And what I, you know, in just the small time using this one, it's, that that little part of your brain doesn't have to work that hard and can focus right. on other things. It's, it's one of those things where there are times where I need out of focus. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, there are plenty of times where I can, like, even on this camera, pulling focus, like, you get into a cadence with it where it's like, I, I know exactly how far to move sure. the lens and everything like that. So, like, for me, a lot of times, just repicking it up and being able to do that, it, it just uh, makes it so that... I um, I just know what the camera, where that focus is, and you get into like this kind of, uh, I would say intimate relationship with the camera, <laughs> cool. but like, like you, 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 it becomes an extension of yourself. Sure. When we were yeah. shooting, I hadn't used the RED in, in f a few shoots because we've been doing a lot of Sony shoots. Yeah. And so then when I was going handheld with it, I was like, I, oh yeah, there's my muscle memory just sure. clicking back in. And each lens is a little different, so it does yeah. require that, that yeah. uh, approach. So... I didn't really have a B cam to my my Epic W. I did use I've used my Sony FS700 a while back uh, with you know the 4K recorder. I've used the um, Blackmagic 6K. Blackmagic 6K was the most recent camera I had because it did allow for Blackmagic RAW. But yeah. there is something to be said. I mean, we shot um, you know I have a lot more cameras now than I did a few years back. But we shot uh, Cook Like a Champion, yeah. and if you want, you can check out that episode of Film Scene on our channel. Shout out um, Ace Champion, good exactly. Buffalo, exactly, great guy. Uh, and we did we did this cooking show for five seasons, uh, but um, people will notice that I did use my red as one of the cameras just because at that time I didn't have I didn't have the FX6 I didn't have the FX30, so the red was a necessary camera. But I use it. At first, I had used it uh, on more of a medium shot, yeah. but I was running into a problem where the color of the red, the, just the red tonality, yeah. was very, very different on the red than it was on the Sonys. Right. I wouldn't say one is better or worse. I, I probably prefer the red a little bit better, Sure. but it was so different that in the color grade, I was spending a ton of time trying to get the cameras to match. Yeah. And so what we did is we just converted the red to the close-up camera and just really focused on the uh, cooktop. So then we ne weren't having, like if, if Ace wore like a red cooking mm, um, mm -hmm. uniform, then it was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what would you do uh, if you made a pasta sauce? You were screwed. Well, it's that angle. The other cameras didn't get as much. Yeah, fair enough. But I will. Uh, I'll, I'll take your your joke. That's fine. <laughs> Actually, I did do a cooking episode of our cooking. Yeah. Of the pasta sauce, we did my pasta sauce. Oh, that's fine. Great. Good episode. It's still on our, our known as website. known as recipe. Uh, my my grandma or my my aunt Florence oh, um, okay. actually, nice. but. Um, yeah, we did uh, so that you can in fact check it on creativeedgepro.com, our okay. portfolio yeah. section. That episode is still up. Nice, sweet. One of the few ones that we, we left out. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> so you did ask about all these smart devices that I'm yes. currently running on the camera. And so first of all, we did a review of the Axoon uh, wireless transmitter. Yep. And we talked about one of the things I loved about that was the ability to go, you can wire, um, or you can use the the, the a receiver and plug it into like a television, obviously. Yeah. Um, you, but it also had the ability to plug in via USB C to like a laptop right. and be used as an import. And it created its own little ad hoc network that you could run and view directly on a smart device. Yeah. That's cool. I love it. Yep. This has it too. Now, my Sony's have it, but the. Um, the resolution is is a lot lower on the Sonys. We yeah. we I've tried it with the FX30. We have it with the FX6. It's a good director's monitor. It's a great director's monitor. Right, but, but you would never be able to pull no. focus off of it. I can I can make sure. Oh, yep, this is in frame the way that I need it to be. Good job, right. Tony. Keep exactly. on keeping and if, on. And also, it's good for me when I'm lighting. If I put the camera here and I want right. to go over and tweak a light, I can look at it yep. and not have to set up a full blown wire. The action is nice, but we don't always have time or the need to yeah. set up the whole thing up. And then you got more batteries that you're running. So I love it, but I don't always use it. So the wireless is great, but again, it's not. 
good for focus. Yeah. That said, the uh, oh, the boy. Komodo, and so like if you look at the app here, um, you can actually pinch zoom and then it'll go there. And then if you pinch zoom again, it'll go full Come screen. On. And it's pretty darn good. I mean, there's, there's, Hi, Quinn. there's Quinn. Hello. Quinn, Quinn, Quinn with the autofocus. So are you getting a good shot of the monitor here? I am. To make sure that we don't get reflections. But um, yeah, that autofocus is working pretty darn good there. And yeah, I mean, you can see the latency. There's minimal latency Middle, and the yeah. resolution is good. That said, on my phone, I'll flip this around a bit. It's even better. So we'll, we'll tilt up that monitor. Hopefully that works. Go fuller screen. So I'll move this around and you can see on the phone, there's even less latency. It is, and that's because I'm going in via USB-C. So that's one of the things that they added on the Komodo X specifically. They did add this as a, like a module that you could uh, put on this top interface here. Uh, for the OG Komodo, sure, uh, but they built it into the Komodo X, and I'm like, I don't know if I need to get an external monitor, um, which yeah. is like sounds ludicrous. But there are two reasons that I'm hesitant to get like an external monitor. First of all, the the fact that this so Red makes a, a their DSMC three monitor, but it's made by Small HD. It's mm -hmm. great. It's three grand. Yeah. And I've, I've spent like that monitor was like 2,500, I think when I got it for there at the time. But for what I intended the Komodo, if this was my A cam, sure, I would buy yeah, it. For it sure. to be a B cam, I'm just, I don't know. And so, but for me to get this, and this I can change the size of the smart device. This yeah. is my fold phone, which you can see like opens up and I can use it in the full tablet mode if would I it wanted to. Tablet mode? It would, it's just that this holder, will, sure. it doesn't okay. go big enough. Um, but I can get a bigger phone. I yeah. can get a newer phone. I can get a high high brightness phone. I can tablet. get a I can get a tablet. And obviously, we're using this tablet right here. So um, part of me is like, ah, maybe I'll just go with. And I, that's why I'm leaning towards right now. Until I have a need there, it pops sure. up. But also the touch screen, and that's the thing. Like I could put any old uh, five inch monitor in here. I've got several five inch yeah. monitors and seven inch monitors, um, but they don't have the touch screen. Right. And so it incorporates the touchscreen of your device to be right, able to Right, and you can even like focus. tap to focus, and you can see That's... it changing right here as I tap around. Um, and, it, and it goes full screen in different modes. So I'll do it here so it's easier to see. But if I zoom out, I can. this is camera information, which I can then tap in, and I can change uh, the, uh, the ISO. I can you know do any of that. Uh, I can up, adjust the aperture. Uh, you can see the sound settings. You can tweak that in there. Um, but here, even with the focus, I can manually, now it's set to autofocus right now, I'd have to turn it off, but you, I can manually no. do the focus like that. And this no. is also, if I go to tools, um, that's where I would could turn on the face detect, is that right here? So that's autofocus off. And then if I go, I'm trying to remember where it is, autofocus position, I don't know. I, I still haven't played with this a ton, but I know that somewhere in here there is face detect. But anyways, uh, yeah, so there's the focus controls, there's the settings, there's all sorts of stuff. Of course, you've got uh, your playback controls. So if I go back here and hit the playback button, I can pull up you know, different scenes that I have shot and bam, there I'm playing it wirelessly from my phone. Yeah our tablet or whatever like that. So that's that's the evolution. The, the app on this was was good. Sure. Um, it, it wasn't for, this is actually free. Uh, this wow. one I had to pay for an iPad app, I had to pay like 150 bucks, which sure. for a wireless controller is still yeah. a steal. And so I literally yeah. got a, a dedicated uh, iPod and then uh, um, a uh, an iPad sure. uh, as well for and so they they're nice for for controlling but like I could tr control playback but it wouldn't play it on this yeah, thing it right. would only play it on the screen sure there. so that's neat I can call it up yeah the fact that it all this wirelessly works that's super cool and again I can touch this um, on the the screen I can control it I can do all that kind of stuff and I can do the same thing on the phone so that the other reason that I'm kind of hesitant to get a, a dedicated monitor is the whole um SDI uh thing that's that's sure that not to say that by any means red is is bad at but 
the Komodo, there have been people that have, that there is a protocol to SDI. And for any of you watching that use cameras with SDI, it's always last in, first out. Right. That needs to be the protocol with it. And what hap- what that means is if you are taking and plugging in SDI to a camera, um, you should have your monitor powered on or at least power to it and then camera power and then plug in your SDI cable. Yeah. And then it, when you're getting ready to swap batteries on your camera or on the monitor, you need to unplug the SDI cable. Sure. And the reason for that is because the SDI cable, as they've gotten better and more like you went from 3g sdi to, to 12 now 12g sdi the the amount of data that's going through that single line of mm-hmm. cable is intense and there's power and there's data and there's a lot of things going through it sure and what can happen is if you suddenly starve it of power it can have a feedback that goes through and can oh, actually yeah. fry the port on the camera oh is that all i've yeah exactly i've never had that happen on a camera yeah. but there are people that have had that report mm. And for some reason, it happens more often on Komodos than others. I don't know if it's That's just a being, big risk, you know, because like this has this IO that I have on my my Epic W has an HDMI. Great. Uh, this only has SDI, mm, so there okay. is no other option so aside. So USB C or right, which okay. the USB C isn't a video feed; it's just the the signal feed to the app. I gotcha. So okay. it's it's doing the exact same thing it is doing here. Interestingly enough, on the USB C. Uh, it is actually, I have to turn the phone to, uh, to USB tethering. Um, oh, that's because okay. it's still sending an internet signal across uh, the sure. USB-C. That's all it's doing. Sure. And so I have to, so that's the way that I can run it. Yeah. Um, but uh, in order, f- the, the whole reason I'm USB-Cing it to, I can unplug this and they both would be wireless. The USB-C reduces the latency gotcha. even more. So okay. I might as well. And it powers the camera sure. too, which is, or the, the phone, which yeah. is kind of nice. So. That's that's why I'm leaning towards just going that way, and then yeah. theoretically I just unplug this, and then I've got a wireless monitor then yeah. too. So yeah. uh, it does have this nice on top monitor. I was gonna say let's let's I mean let's that's don't bury the lead because that's yeah. huge. It is really nice to have, and it's not just settings; it is full blown. It has a little mini video feed. Yeah. Now it's darn near impossible to do anything like full focus or whatever like that. Sure. With that. Um, but if but, you have an autofocus, yeah, and or. And I, you know, we do a lot with Kessler Crane, and this is a beast to get mm-hmm. all rigged up. I mean, you really have to go bare bones with it. This you'd be able to get on the Kessler Crane uh, motion control system, and at least have a view of what's happening exactly. really easily. Yeah, sometimes yeah, because sometimes you just need the composition. Yeah, like, and so like how many times like I've done gimbal cams or whatever like that right? that don't have a camera uh, any. Uh, monitor on them so then i'm going to tweak a setting and it's like ah, i gotta look through the viewfinder yeah. like i've stripped yeah. down my my fs5 and my fx6 sometimes and the fs6 doesn't even have a viewfinder anymore right. so then it's like i got nothing yeah. i gotta plug give me a monitor somewhere so i can plug it in yeah. and just see what i'm doing so yeah having the onboard monitor feature. is nice even if it isn't great for pulling focus um for the uh the rest of the this kit it's pretty basic you know this is a a uh, EF adapter so that the the lens mount on the red is uh, the Komodo X is uh, um, the RF lens mount so the newer oh, uh, Canon RF okay. uh, so the mirrorless um, so then I'm using a RF to EF adapter with my Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 lens good pairing Great here nice. um, the uh, side handle I have is Condor blue uh, as is the side plate that's attached via NATO rail uh, and the RE Swiss um, rosette here. So that is just, I wanted something simple. I, I need a handle, but I also wanted something that was super easy to take off. You'll yeah. see over here, there are times that we've rigged up the Epic W on a gimbal yeah. or on motion control, and I had to strip the whole thing down. This is attached with a bunch of captive screws. So it takes me a minute or two to get it's, that side yeah, handle off. And then, the, then it's bare, so then I have a panel that I have to reattach to just keep the connectors safe and everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, having the handle really quickly removable was yeah. one thing that was important to me. Because um, if there's anything that a client loves, it's just sitting around waiting while you're fiddling with your exactly. equipment. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, for the battery, you know, this is a, a red brick battery, which is the, the, the V-Lock. They're, they're bigger ones. They're, they're beefy. They're red branded. Um, Great. Used. I have six of these. They've worked yeah. great for me for years. 
Um, but for the part of this, the reason I got this is to be able to be a gimbal camera, mm. to be a motion control camera, uh, things that where this camera, this whole package is a little overweight. Uh, I can strip this down and, you know, I can go much smaller lens than this, but I just, that's the one I had sitting sure. around, but this is a small HD, um, or not, sorry, a small rig, uh, mini V lock battery. And it is able to, it's a 50, uh, 50, I forget, megawatt, milliamp, whatever yeah. the heck it is. Uh, it's one of the slimmest one that 50s, they make. 50 batteries. 50s, 50s batteries. Yeah. 50s power. 50 powers. <laughs> the, the 50 power, yeah. yeah. This one has more powers. Yeah. That one only has 50 powers. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I, go, I have three of these. Um, and then I also have a micro V-Lock to standard V-Lock. So I can actually put this battery on here if I need to run it for a longer period, like yeah. for interview, if it's on a tripod. But this is great for handheld. It's lighter. It's... Oh, it's man. you know good yeah. for gimbal work, all that kind of stuff. The only downside is these ones don't communicate the actual battery life to the camera. Sure. So, but fortunately, there's a little um, screen on the back there that shows the percentage. So, at least I can pop on that every once in a while and yeah. double check. So we have 55 they, percent of 50 batteries. Exactly. 50, 50 power. It does have. Uh, there are some other batteries that uh, communicate the power throughput, but they're just a little bit more expensive. Sure. So, I might get some of those down the road. Again, this is, I, I need to get a package that would work, but I'm, I just want to kind of see how I use this. Yeah. Uh, one of the other main reasons that we, I got this camera was kind of the ticked it over for me because there are things I could use as a B camera to this, the, the Gemini series. Um, I could get an, you know, another Epic or a Scarlet. Sure. I could go up and have this be the, the you know, get like a V Raptor or a Monstro, which are a lot more expensive. Yeah. Um, but overall, I've been very happy with the Epic W. And so I was like, I still look at this as my A cam when I'm shooting red. Um, but the thing that this will definitely A cam for is when we start doing more and more virtual production. Yeah. I shouldn't say when we start, we, we do it all the time. But they, when I'm shooting virtual production and I need to avoid any sort of banding issues, right. there's a very specific frame rate that I can shoot on my, um, uh, on my Sony, uh, my FX6. I have to shoot exactly at 24p, not 23.98, but yep. 24 exactly, uh, which on that camera only shoots in 4K, like um, at a very much lower compression, so it eats yeah. through through memory cards. No kidding. Yeah. And then you have to do 144 degree shutter speed, right? Or shutter angle. So that combination avoids banding. Um, <laughs> That's great, but like it doesn't give me a lot of flexibility in, in no. other regards. The Komodo X is a global shutter camera. I this is I mean, there aren't a lot of global shutter cameras. Yes. And the fact that it is as affordable as this one is is pretty stinking cool. Can you explain what a global shutter yes. camera so is? Yes. So most cameras have uh, a rolling shutter. Yeah. So if you were to whip the camera back and forth, you'll get the Jello cam. So I'll have Quinn just whip it back and forth whoa, really, really whoa, fast. Whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> so you might notice in that that there is a bit of a um, the the jiggle, the, sure. the the wobble that's happening back and forth like that. The um, that's because you're having this rolling shutter. The pass is going over it like this. You get that jiggle when you wiggle. You get the jiggle. You know what? Um, so the global shutter just every. Uh, every frame is completely captured simultaneously, the entire amount of it. Um, typically, those cameras suffer from uh, lower light sensitivity, okay. which the Komodo isn't like an amazing. It's not like my FX6 or sure. anything like that, but it is still very comparable to the F, uh, to the Epic W, so that isn't a huge compromise. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the reason that's beneficial is that you can avoid the scan lines, the banding wow. that happens. Yeah. Um, and we only have a projector now, but we definitely plan on going to a full LED wall down the road. Sure. And so that was just like another thing well, like this camera will, will last me a long time when it comes to virtual production and become the main go-to camera for that. Yeah. So how about people that are, you know, they're, they're at home, you know, because this was not cheap, but relatively you know, compared to what people are spending on some of these other ones. And, you know, if people are willing to make, make an investment, they want to do virtual. So they have a big TV. How would that work with the TV? Is that going to be easier? Is it going to be harder? I mean, Red as a whole is its own workflow. You know, sure. like, you know, whenever we've done shoots where we've been, you know, if I'm, I bring my Sony cameras out because they're typically less to set up, less to manage. If we're doing smaller crews or one man band mm -hmm. jobs, 
I'm, I'm going to prefer my Sony yeah. unless the client is specifically asking for the red. Sure. Um, so, I mean, the autofocus is one factor, yeah. but the built-in ND filters, the, um, the lens, the, the infrastructure, all of the things that are built into it, the built-in audio, you know, the Komodo X actually has really good preamp, so that's nice, but the, uh, you know, the Epic W, we always had to shoot dual system audio. So sure. we, we had a, a, a Zoom F8 mm -hmm. uh, mixer recorder that we use whenever we were doing this. And so that was just another step. Yep. Um, fine and, and worth it when we're yeah. doing that but especially in a production that where you're shooting this probably is going to call for that anyways. exactly yeah so um if you are uh like again if i i need to put nds on this i'm gonna have to use a map box sure and then i have a whole and i've got like three grand worth of nd filters that are specifically ir cut filters that i got for this mm. um they're some of the best ones you can get. And I have the full range all the way from a 0.3 ND all the way up to like 2.4, 2.7. I forget exactly okay. what, but like one of the highest stops that you can get just sure. that way I have it across the board and I don't have to stack NDs at yeah. that point. Um, I have a map box. I, I use it all the time with that. Uh, and that's great. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But Yes, it, it is. I always look at it, the the red takes a little bit more to babysit. Even to use my cinema primes, they don't know yeah. how to focus, you know. Right. So I gotta pull focus, and even the focus throw on them is longer, so it takes a little bit more. Sure. I can't just whip, you know, like like this has a much shorter focus throw between, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyways, all that said, um, if you, it, it really has to build. That's one of the reasons that I have over a dozen cameras, um, yeah. because there are plenty of times we. You know, we were just doing a shoot last week where we did a three camera interview shoot and you know we did that all on Sony's because it, w it wouldn't have made sense to being the r but the red was my B my b-roll camera yeah. my main b-roll camera yeah. and so um again the right tool for the job sure. really but within all of that to answer your question it it depends on your needs and your workflow. Okay. I definitely think the Komodo is a great play. I mean, even the OG Komodo can be a good A cam. Yeah. The only reason I went the, with the X was just because I was like, it's newer, it's got a few more features. Again, it does have the good built-in preamp, so if I needed to shoot audio to it, that's better to have. Yeah. The USB-C means that I don't have to um, have an external monitor. I can just use a phone or a smart device. Like there, there are a few bells and whistles, quality of life things that they improved upon. Sure. Even just having the V-Lock instead of the uh, the Canon batteries that they were using previously, which were a little harder to get and starting to get a little yeah. dated. Um, yeah, I, I I like Red. I like the look that I get from Red. Yes. You know, there's a lot of times where I. I'll be shooting my Sony's and I grab my red. I'm like, this just looks nicer. Yes. It has a different quality to it yep. that I really gravitate towards. Yep. Now for some people that could be Canon or that could be black magic yeah. that, you know, every camera is a little different. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said there was part of getting a red wasn't for the name. Sure. Um, I did have clients that were kind of interested in that and they, they wanted to see that level of, of, uh, caliber of camera in our sure. arsenal and so I, w I was happy to do it and i've been happy with the quality of it yeah and i mean one perk you know this one shoots 8k this one maxes out at 6k and again for the shoot in fact you need it one of the reasons we need to wrap up this pretty <laughs> soon is you are going to be taking the footage that we shot on the red yep. uh, that i purposely shot with a higher shutter speed so that we could pull uh frame grabs out of it and use it for photography for yeah. the client's website and that's you know you're our, our in-house photographer so you're also doing a, a dedicated photo shoot with them right but it allowed us to increase our efficiency by having all the, those people shots that i was getting because yes. you're going to go and probably get a little bit wider shots right. more environment shots but all the detail people shots that i got we can still grab 35 megapixel images yeah. from and that's there's a value to yeah. that what would we be able to pull from this one um so 4k is like 12 megapixel 6k somewhere in the middle probably okay. in the 20s i sure, guess sure um you basically multiply your your your, your horizontal by your vertical resolution yeah. and then that becomes your your okay. million x pixels okay. um so yeah definitely 6k isn't anything to yeah. to turn up your nose at uh but you know saying we've got 35 megapixels being captured 24 times a second. Yeah. Uh, the key thing is though, you know, you, the camera either has to be somewhat still or you have to turn up your shutter speed to compensate for the fact that, you know, if you're moving it around, you're right. going to get that motion blur. Yep. Now we were okay turning up the shutter speed on this shoot because 
uh, we kind of had like a high energy. It was very tip. frenetic energy. Yeah. 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 For for what we were shooting on the red, we also did run some gimbals, yeah. some jibs. So those were shot much more sweeping and gradual. And then we used the red for kind of that high impact stuff, so yep. that we could kind of have this uh, diversity of footage. Yep. And then be able to intercut, so it's high energy all around. Just exactly. not everything looking the same. Otherwise, yep. people get motion sick. Uh, what is the back shutter speed for this? The max or shutter speed? The max, uh, max frame rate. Okay, so in, in and that's another differentiator between the OG Komodo and, and this one. The OG, I think, was either 30 or 40 uh, frames per second at, at 6K. Okay. Uh, and in, uh, eight, or in 6K on the Komodo X, it will do up to uh, 80 frames per second. Sweet. So Ooh. that was another perk, definitely something that I was, I was happy to get. Because like on the Epic W, they it maxes out about 30 frames in 8k um i can drop it down to 6k and then be able to shoot 80 actually sure. but then you're cropping into the yeah. to the sensor area which changes your your framing and your aesthetic somewhat yep. so it's nice to have the extra at the full resolution that's that's gonna be nice mm -hmm. buttery buttery smooth yeah exactly so Again, we just got it in. I thought it would be fun to do an episode of the podcast yeah. on it because there's a lot of people talking about it. Sure. And I thought we need to share the reason we got it yeah. um, and our just our initial impressions of it. But we will probably talk more about it when we've done actual shoots with it. Yeah. Um, and I can do more than just testing. You, you were bugging me because like, we had that shoot last week. Like, can you just bring it out and shoot? Just bring it out. I'm like, Ben, it's a big shoot, and I haven't even turned the thing on, and I, I don't want to discover stuff. I don't stuff. want your excuses. I don't want your excuses. I just want to shoot. Here's what I love. So um, the FX30 for, has become my new favorite camera. I love shooting on the Sony FX30 uh, because you get a lot of similarity of look and feel of the bigger cameras, but it's in a tiny little DSLR looking. So for today example, we were on a shoot where... We weren't anywhere that we weren't allowed to be shooting, but we definitely didn't want to draw attention to it just because we didn't. We wanted real reactions. Of we were people. just going man on the man street, street. quick, uh, and there are certain areas. Green Bay isn't horrible about it, but sometimes, like if the big, the bigger the camera, the more necessary a permit. Yes, and certain cities, especially, is like if you put a thing, anything on the ground, you right. have to have a permit. Yep. So a tripod or a photography light stand. or videography. Yeah. yeah. And so what I like about the FX30 is that it has that small form factor where it's nondescript. Especially if you, even if you take off that camera and you just have that little rig, mm -hmm. um, that just almost looks like a toy. That it's like, oh no, we're just we're just hanging out and about. Um, you know, you throw a little fifty one eight on there. Well, I don't, you know, fifty one two um, lens, and you have a little pancake lens on there. That's a little tiny. It's a little tiny. What could you possibly capture with that little guy? Exactly, and you know, I'm. Obviously, this is going to be bare sensor, but like I have a 16 mil pancake lens. Yeah, right. Or I should say pancake, but prime lens that's 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 almost this big. So like on a gimbal, I can run it, and it's about this form factor. Yeah, awesome. Who does that? Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, well I done, mean, Red. Even with this stripped down, it's still yeah way bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to the be able the ability to be able to go and and run and gun with this a little bit more. Um, and it just Again, with the, the built-in monitor, with the autofocus, I think it was it was the necessary improvements all around that even though it's a smaller form factor, smaller camera, slightly less resolution, I think, in my opinion, is going to make my new my new favorite. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, I wasn't looking to replace the Epic W because right. the, the V-Raptors are nice, the yeah. Monstros are nice. Yep. Um, but I, I'm, I bought this with the intention, this is probably the only red that I was going to buy. Yeah. And in that, this is now the second red that I've purchased, but more again as a B cam to sure. the, the Epic W. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So if you have any questions, comments, you just wanna talk about the red a little bit more or any questions for us or Tony, feel free, put the comment down right down there. Uh, let us know, we love, we love to talk anything gear. Or if we were talking and it was just like, I have no idea what gibberish they're saying, let us know, we love to, to share more. Um, so. And then while you're while you're down there and hanging out, put just see that subscribe button like right right down over there. Feel free to give it a little push if you haven't already. It's pretty cool. Super easy, and you'd be amazing how much it'll change your life. Yeah, that's. I mean, fundamentally, not, it'll change your life. Fundamentally, it'll go from not being a subscriber to a subscriber. Changed forever. We're back with the Pop Culture Corner. 
Yeah. It is. It's been a while. Because um, we had last week, we or last episode, we had Dr. Fred Johnson from Initiative That's One. That's right. Yeah. That was a lot yep. of fun. Great guest. Uh, and again, if you uh, haven't checked out their, their work, we do their podcast and we do their think tanks, which you can subscribe to on a uh, monthly basis. Yep. They come out of one. We got one come up this yeah. Friday again. This is this is a completely they that we're not paid to say this, but um, it is. I grew up. My dad was a pastor, and uh, w- in watching the first time that they came to us, I'm like, here's a little bit about what we're about. I was like, oh my gosh, this feels like church. Like it is inspirational. It is it is uplifting. It's um, practical. It's practical. It's yeah. It's um, it's not church. It's not religious based in any way. It is it is all business and motivation, but really becoming the best version of yourself. Uh, for your team, your company, your position, your family. Um, and yeah, the whole team there is just wildly smart and wildly insightful about what they're bringing. So yeah, that was great to have yep. him on. So there's your first bit of pop culture is go tune into that. Yeah, Initiative One Podcast. Exactly. All right. So we have come to the end of uh, Secret Wars, oh, Secret yeah. Invasion. Yep. Did you finish it yet? I have not finished it yet. Okay. I have not finished it um, I So I won't spoil anything. We always try to avoid spoilers. Yep. But... Um, I like aspects of it. I don't know mm-hmm. if we talked about this on the show, but it has probably one of my favorite scenes in all of Marvel. In Marvel, the entire, yeah. the whole MCU. Just I don't know that that the the there's a uh, dining room scene okay. uh, with uh, Nick Fury and a lady that I won't again, depending on if you've seen it or not, I will keep that vague, mm-hmm. but. He, uh, that scene, the drama, the acting, the, mm. the implication, the editing of that scene. Yeah. I don't know. It just, it, it, it hit me on all the right spots. What I love is that Samuel L. Jackson is allowed to act yeah. in this series. And I, I forget if we've mentioned this on the show already, but I feel like he's, he is always cast as the, you know, it's, I, I'm not sure if he'll ever live down snakes on a plane, sure. not in a bad way, but just that character, that or, hype. Or, um, uh, what is the word? The Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I and and he plays it incredibly. Mm-hmm. But I feel like what Secret Invasion allowed him to do was branch out of that, mm-hmm. um, step into a new role that has so much more depth and and so much more complexity to his character, where it's not just a ah oh, get the bad guys. I mean, there is there's a richness to it, and he fills it completely and really well that I, I dig. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of people that, um, are saying though, that that, like he was kind of wasted on the series. I, I like a lot of the, what the series did. I don't like how it ended Mm. now. Granted, I, it's hard to say like, okay, they, we already know there's going to be an Avengers secret wars movie. Yeah. Um, secret wars, secret invasion. Right. Uh, so secret invasion was the show. Secret Secret wars Wars is the movie. Yeah. So this was always a precursor to it, which is to a certain extent you can see that that trend that's been happening. Sure. How WandaVision was a precursor mm-hmm. to Doctor Strange and Mar- Multiverse of Madness, um, you know Loki to Quantum Mania. Right. Like, there's a lot of things that are that are coming from uh, from that, and I'm I'm cool with it. I think that's fine, and that also makes sense. Yeah, and that allows the story to breathe a little bit more, so that we can get more of these characters. Sure. But that said, you know. I still would like the show to end strong. And I felt mm. like the ending of secret invasion was a little bland and a bit of a superhero slug fest that was anti satisfying. You know, was just, it, do you feel it was just rushed where they're like, ah, we need to wrap this up, duke it out and get to it. I thought, you know, like there are times where, Like okay, like say the end of Star Wars, uh, of you know, um, Rise of Skywalker, yeah. where it's like, you know, the motivations of, and then how we got there. It's like okay, Palpatine was behind everything, and then he's got a giant <laughs> thousand stars. I'm like, gosh darn! Like you, you, when you get to the point where it's just like it's bigger, yeah. And I'm like, you're losing me. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what they did. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a giant army or anything like that, but like how the, the the end game of the bad guy and all that kind of stuff was just like what the reason I liked the show was the spy drama sure. and then it turned into a punchy 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 <sighs> stuff, which sure. I get as a superhero movie yeah. but that's not what I wanted right. there right um and yeah again the, the 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 end of it with even Samuel L. Jackson everything like that I don't know it's 
But yeah, hopefully the the war the Secret Wars movie continues it and makes it satisfying. Sure. But you know, I I, I liked every episode all the way up to the finale, yeah. which I always say. Got to finish strong. Got to stick the landing. Yeah, got to stick the landing. My my goal, my or my hope, my hope for the franchise is that, um, th- exactly what you said, where it f- it is going to finish off, and they were intentional with where they left it to mm-hmm. be able to set it up properly for the next step. Right. Because I would say WandaVision it was one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest examples of the kind of the opposite of it, where it started so weird. I was like, it took, it really took me three episodes and it took someone saying, watch Check three episodes. Out, yeah. And I, and I hate, I hate that trope where it's like, Oh, you just got to watch it for three seasons and then you'll really get into the show. It's like, no, that's probably just not that great, great of a show. Um, but WandaVision, they were doing something you completely unique. Uh, and it really did take a little time to be like, Oh, what? Oh, Oh, I see where every, every second every frame was so thought out and called back to you and and so i hope my hope is and loki i think did a very similar thing jumping in with quantum mania where it's like what are they saying what i think they're saying here or is this is this could this be uh and so who knows you know it's it's one of those where it'll take actually get seeing secret wars to be able to see is that is yeah. that gonna stick it? And I'm also like a lot of people are complaining about the phase four of MCU, where it's like, oh, it's not as good as the other phases. Well, you know, in the previous phases, they had a singular problem. Yeah. Um, even though they were like different bad guys, it was leading up to Thanos. But then you've got like, okay, there's the Secret Wars. You've got the, um, you know, obviously, um, what's his butt. I can't think of a Kang, um, you know, and the multiverse problems. And I did like how like they treated it like a bunch of reasons were what caused the multiverse to break. Mm -hmm. Like it was both Dr. Strange and Spider-Man and Loki and Wanda and as it it would in a multiverse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just one event. They all coincided to shatter the multiverse to say like, why hadn't this happened before? Well, it's because a bunch of people screwed up simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. I liked that. That was the lead in instead of just this one pivotal moment. And Thanos showed up and now, right. That now it's his movie. Right. Um, I do like that, and I'm hoping that they can continue to grow on that. Um, I haven't quite hit superhero fatigue. I know some people do. I, mm. I, I go in and out of it. Like I we just watched um, Guardians of the Galaxy three, and right? just came out a couple of days ago. Ah. Yeah. Uh, enjoyed it. Sleeping on it. Um, it was a bit bipolar in its tonality. Okay. How so, so you know, like where it's got some incredibly funny moments uh, juxtaposed to some really sad moments okay. not quite as bad as thor love and thunder sure um but you know there's that and i felt that th- some people really liked the villain in that i thought he was a little um one note um sure. a little just like you know fantastical like i'm just super- a bit much. megalomaniac you know yeah. um but much. other than that the the rest of the movie was really solid cool. and enjoyable mm-hmm. all right Strange New Worlds. Let's talk about musicals. Musical. All right. I, this, I, I never, you want to talk about devices? I thought we were never going to get to Taylor Swift. Goodness gracious. <laughs> no. All let's right. let's talk about Strange New Worlds. I admittedly, I was a, I'm a, a, I really love um, Voyager, Star Trek Voyager. Mm-hmm. I have not gotten into which it. I, I, I just said this to you the other day, but I just got shared like somebody shared this on Facebook that the um, between the original series and Voyager. The same amount of time has passed between Voyager and today. I'm not okay with that information. Like, uh, that, 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 that hurts a little bit in my heart. Um, I'm, I haven't gotten into, I know I need to get into Picard and Stranger Worlds. Uh, I honestly, the one song that you showed me from Strange New Worlds season two, two three, what are we on now? Uh, it is two. Season two uh, is enough for me to say, sure, I'm in. Um, it is so well done, um, and it's just is that, is that the opening, the opening number, if you it will. Is the, the opening number is the first song that they sing. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the not to be overly spoilery, but the the general premise is that some sci-fi wibbly wobbly moment thing happens. Wibbly wobbly moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That causes uh, a, a what do they call it? Um, I can't remember the term. A an improbability field to shatter and then cause uh, it to be them to exist in a, a reality where everybody breaks into song during heightened emotions. Yeah. 
which so then they're like all avoiding trying to avoid being heightened in their emotions which is an interesting premise and problem to have right because at one point they, they started like when they would go into song they would reveal their deepest darkest things and then everybody be around them hearing it so yeah. then they would be like and then they'd come out of the song and be like uh i didn't want to tell you that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so anyways it was it was great the numbers were good. Some are better than others for sure. Um, it's, there's a ton of just earworms that yeah. I, that I can't. Get I've out had of my it head. stuck in my head all week. Yeah. Yep. Um, you can just go and just Google uh, status reports from Subspace Rhapsody, which is the name of the episode. Subspace Rhapsody. Yeah. Well done. Well done, creators. I love that they even like the the artwork for the episode was yeah. very like classic musical yep. look too. Yep. Um, yeah. Super divisive episode. There's really? been tons of divisive episodes over the years in Star Trek. People feel like, oh, it's universe breaking because, like, you know, it's. But I'm like, they sci fied it enough. There's, yeah. there's been other times that Star Trek has sci fied something weird and crazy. Sure. I mean, there's an episode of Next Generation where all the next gen characters are dressed up like uh, uh, Robin Hood. <laughs> and it's because Q, like, was trying to teach Picard a lesson. And so he does it. And you're like, well, okay, fine. Q made him do it. So whatever. Like, Gosh, you know, like <laughs> they, they, they don't have Q in, in Strange New World, so they, you know, came up with another thing. It's yeah. science fiction. My yeah. gosh. I thought it was well executed. Yeah. And and to you out there that don't like it, just enjoy the magic. You muggle. Just enjoy the magic. <laughs> like, again, as not a Star Trek fan, it was enjoyable to watch from a spectacle. Mm-hmm. They they did it really well. And if if you're going to do a musical episode whatever it may be we said we had the same conversation about um um not family guy uh sorry south park i'm not a south park fan but the south park movie musical is incredible and so they if you're gonna do it do it well and i think that next or um strange new strange new worlds did it extremely well Mm -hmm. extremely well so you can you can quiet your mouths, people who dissent. Just don't watch it then, and let the rest of us just have our little musical moments. I, you know, one thing I've even I've said this many times on the show, but like I'm okay if there's Star Trek that I don't like. Sure. Knowing if there's a, a wide enough audience that does like mm. it, that great. That you know, there's how many cultures in the world? There's yeah. how many languages and how many styles? Um, I'm, I'm glad that, that a show like Star Trek can really reach a wide enough audience and sure. then be in a, that universe that we can always kind of enjoy that cohesiveness yeah. to it. Um, and I, the like, show to still make sense. Sure. It's, it's not like they're jumping all over, just jumping the shark. It, they make it make sense. Yeah. Some people hated the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies, yeah. the Calvin Universe yeah. ones, because they're like, well, you know, this isn't what real Star Trek was like. And they made the characters too amplified in their characteristics. And sure. Kirk is a lot more, you know, calmed down and, and logical than, than Mr. Chris Pine's, like, you know, hmm. shoot from the hip. Yeah. Well, I don't care. Um, <laughs> they made that for p- enjoyable. There are yeah. lots of people that have been introduced to Star Trek through the Calvin yeah. movies. Great. We have some Star Trek action movies. We also have some, we've got the the Voyage Home, the one with the whales, and we have the Wrath of Khan, which is a very kind of slow and, and, and metho- almost like a Western in its uh, style and sure. tone. Um, anyways, I'm, I love all the different options. Yeah. Um, and then Star Trek is always an anthology style show. Right. So to have the variety in it is it works. better. It works. Yeah. All right, we haven't watched. I haven't seen Barbie yet. I'm not. I've heard so much good. I heard. I heard a, a lot of backlash, and it made me apprehensive. Um, but I've heard so much more positive, mm-hmm. and rebuttals to the backlash that puts it in context. Where it's like, oh, okay. I think if you go in with the correct context and understanding of the movie, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm going to see it. Yeah. I'm going to see it in Just theater. Just a billion. I think I heard. Yeah. Yeah, first female produced and female or female directed movie, female produced movie to break a billion dollars. So shout out to those creators. Y'all are doing amazing, um, amazing things. Again, say what you will about the message, if you disagree or not. Um, the fact that we have such a breakthrough for women in Hollywood, especially in this time where, you know, where writers are sh- striking to just get livable wages. That's a big deal. Um, and, and I hope it shows that there is room for more people at the table. Mm hmm. 
Um, quickly, I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. I've been wanting to see it in IMAX. Yeah, we need to do that. We yeah, need to take a little road trip. 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 Yeah, yeah, road trip. Um, but uh, you did see Mission Impossible. I did see Mission Impossible. You haven't seen it yet? I haven't yet. I dug it. Yep. I dug So same. It it is, it's a Mission Impossible movie. Um, they went for it. Uh, Tom Cruise is astounding. I don't know how. I mean, if I was twenty doing his stunts, I would be ecstatic. I don't know how I was doing them at sixty. Um, what I really love, and I'm not. I promise I'm not going to spoil. You've probably most likely seen the the jumping off the cliff scene and all the behind the scenes for it. That's not the biggest stunt. And I love that they've buried it. They have, they, the, I've heard a couple people allude to it. Like they have went to seven countries and only one allowed them to film this one sequence because it was so precarious. What? And that's all I knew about it. So the whole movie is like, all right, well, there's the jump scene. What comes next? Like, when is this going to happen? And it, yeah, it delights, it thrills. It's, it's a fun movie. It felt good. That was the first movie I've seen at the movie theater in years probably two or three years now. So um, it was good to be back at the movie theater. Good to watch it. Um, I highly recommend it. It's, it's not going to knock your socks out. It's, it's going to be what you expected with a shoot 'em up mission impossible style movie. There's some great, um, great character development tugs at your heartstrings a little bit, makes you sit on the edge of your seat a little bit and kept you, kept me entertained for the full three hours two two hours and a bit. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of pop culture. Yeah, I think our, our SD card is about to run out. So, <laughs> Well, thanks everybody watching. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more over at our YouTube channel again, right, right down here somewhere. Click that's that right. button. Click that button. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.